welcome you back and from today we are going to start a series on the topic of uh, azure networking and this uh, would be very beneficial for our friends who are going to attempt their azure administrator or azure architecture certification such as az104 or 303 uh, would be covering all the relevant topics for these certifications one by one so stay tuned and let's begin uh, today in this video we are going to talk about our basic building block that is Azure VNet which is in front of your screen and we'll talk about the VNet basics some of the concepts as well as at the end of the video I would be covering some of the best practices for your VNet configuration so let's begin guys so first of all what is VNet now uh, VNet is uh, it's basically like a traditional network that you would rather operate in your own data centers but it has some additional benefits of cloud such as scale availability and isolation and it's ready within uh, a very quick time period when you start to launch it then it's uh, you can also define it as a logical isolation of azure cloud which is dedicated to your subscription basically it is attached to your subscription and it is like a kind of having your own private piece of the cloud for your utilization then you can also say this is a kind of a you know extended network of your own i mean like you want to extend your data center towards the cloud vnet would be the very first step which, which you you would plan and configure to go ahead so this is all about the vnet and let's talk about certain concepts of the vnet so before we begin we should be aware of certain uh, terms and the concepts and the first of them we should be aware about the address space you would be requiring a custom private ip address space uh, your resources such as uh, your azure resources such as virtual machines would be receiving the ip address from that uh, range then you would be segregating or you would be dividing that vnet ip range into different different subnets and those subnets will help you to segment your virtual network uh, based upon your needs and your requirements right and basically you have to uh, define or you have to have a kind of a subnet address space which can help you appropriately for the your internal requirement of your organization you can use network security groups at subnet level to secure your resources and next concept is the regions basically uh, your vnet would be scoped to a single region or location but it does not mean that you cannot have uh, vnet across different regions of course you can do and you can connect those different region, uh, regions together with the help of network peering right but one vnet would be scoped to a single region or single location then comes the subscription your vnet will also be scoped to your subscription you cannot have a single vnet which has been scoped to different or multiple subscriptions uh, you can implement your uh, multiple virtual networks within your uh, each Azure subscription and Azure region and you can have 1000 VNets max in a subscription if uh, you want more you can go ahead and talk to Azure about it so these are certain concepts now let's see what are we going to do today in this particular uh, demonstration so we will be having uh, we'll create a single VNet in that vnet or virtual network we would be creating two different virtual virtual machines that your vm1 and vm2 my vm1 will have a public ip because i would be connecting to this uh, this virtual machine from outside of the network you can see that and once we reach and land here uh, we would be having a vm2 that vm2 will not have a public ip error so that you cannot reach it uh, from the internet so because but this vm1 and vm2 are part of the same virtual network so by default they would be able to talk to each other based on a private ip address space so we would be once we reached here i would be doing an rdp session to the vm2 so that i can we can see that within the virtual network these two machines would be behaving like they are residing in a simple or a local network so let's jump into the azure portal and see how we can do that okay so to create a virtual network so you click on create virtual networks and currently we don't have anything so let's click on create virtual network i'm pretty sure that you are aware how does the uh, portal look like if not please so feel free to go through my previous videos so here we, we would be uh, selecting a trial so current a subscription so currently i have a free trial i do not uh, okay let's have 
let's create a new resource group for this particular demonstration so i'll call it demo one so this is going to be my resource group basically it's a container which will hold all the related resources for me then we need to give a name to this vnet so i'll call it sales vnet as it was shown in the diagram uh, then you need to you need to select a location or a region for your vnet and current these are the options from the drop down you can choose and basically you would be selecting a location where you think your resources would be uh, hosted or you which you find your users are closer to that location so i'm gonna go ahead with the southeast asia and next we would be selecting an ip address scheme so basically azure provides you a default one if you think this is not gonna work you can delete it and put up a new one let's delete this one and try it another one so i'll go ahead with 10 dot 0 dot 1 sorry 10 dot 1 dot 0 dot 0 slash 16 so i'm gonna go ahead with this one if you want more address uh, spaces for a variant you can put here i'm okay with the first one if you want you can add also ip version 4 which currently we're not doing then you need to add a subnet currently i do not have a subnet because i deleted the default uh, address space let's define a sub or let's add a subnet here let's give it a name i'll call it uh, what should i call it let's call it a public subnet right i'll call it a public subnet because this machine is going to have um, the machine which is going to be part of this vnet will have a public ip address let's change or let's pick up a address range for our subnet and that should be within this ip range which we have here so i'm going to go ahead with 10.1.1.0 slash 24 let's take 24 once you take that subnet range it would be giving you the usable ip address always remember for the exam purposes also that five ip addresses would be reserved by azure and you would be getting 251 out of this particular scope although it's supposed to give you 256 but because 5 is reserved so usable would be 251 if you want to use some service endpoints which we'll talk about later you can select here but currently we're not doing it so let's click on add on to add a subnet i would like to add one more subnet here so let's see and i'll put an ip range of 10.1.2.0 slash 24 this is my cidr range sorry this is not the range i am supposed to put up a name here so i'll call it private subnet right here i'm going to put my range i have copied it from there so i'm going to range I'll take this one 10.1.2.0 it should be different from this one it should not be overlapping and you can see it we have here 10.1.1 here we have 10.1.2 no service endpoints and click on add then we need to click on security these are a couple of new options which you see if you have seen this portal i mean three four months back you will not find these options but now they are here so if you want to have a bastion host you can uh, enable it the bastion host would help you to take the rdp or ssh of your virtual machines without giving or allotting them a, a public ip which would uh, we would be doing this demonstration later so i'm not enabling it yet if you enable it you need to provide the name uh, your subnet address and the public ip address for your bastion services it's a basically platform as a service for taking remote of your virtual machines it makes it's a kind of a uh, uh, it makes uh, basically does not open your rdp or ssh ports to over uh, to public so it's a very good uh, best security option which you can use then we have a ddos protection basically by default you'll have a basic ddos protection but if you want uh, an advanced one that would be paid again so you would be use uh, you can enable it here where if you can put up your ddos plan id here if you know the resource id you can put up the resource id which we do not have currently so i'm going to keep it disabled and i'm not going to use an additional firewall also let's click on tags uh, uh, let's uh, not put the tags here but uh, this would be a very good option if you want to uh, categorize it or group your cost together of resources or some departments for your uh, resources of some departments you can do that we're not doing it let's review and create it is going for final validation and it has been passed let's click on create so now my vnet is going to be created and we would be covering the very first part of it now if you go back to our presentation we have created this sales vnet and in sales vnet we have created two subnets now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create two virtual machines in the, those two subnets 
so here our vnet is ready so let's uh, start creating virtual machines in that you can see this is the overview here is the name of the resource group and here is my address space if you go to the subnet you'll find the subnets here public subnet and private subnet so here are all other options which you see if we create we want to create peerings it will be here if you want to create more subnets then you can create from here so let's go and try creating two virtual machines into that let's click on home and click on virtual machine click on add here I'm going to go with the same resource group, the demo one, and the name of my virtual machine would be VM1. It's going to be the same location, uh, region. I don't want any availability options. I'll go for a Windows uh, 2016 and I'll go with the, the same size which, which has been suggested. That's fine with me. Click on username and password. So these are my username and password. Let's open some uh, RDB3389 is already open. So let's just keep that port open. Click on disk. I'm going with the basic option. Now the most important part of our configuration because we have created our own VNet. So it has already been selected in this location. You can see that and this is the subnet so public subnet has been selected if you want this machine should go to a different one you can select the private one because we have got two subnets here then the public ip i need a public ip for this virtual machine because i would be uh, trying to connecting it from the outer world so i need a public ip here and i'll go with the uh, net uh, basic uh, nic level network security groups and i will have this rdp port 3389 allowed everything else i will not be going for accelerated networking and load balancing options and nothing here i'll just keep it default and make it very quick no tags review and create and let's click on create just create so it's gonna going to submit the resource deployment and then we'll begin deploying the next machine so you can see it's uh, deployment is in progress so let's go and try create another one Click on virtual machine. This time we're going to create a virtual machine in the private subnet and without a public IP address. So here is my resource group and let me give it a name and the name would be, let's call it VM2 as it was there in our uh, presentation. If you can see that this is the VM2 and it's not going to have a public IP. So I'm the same location, no availability option. I don't want any redundancy. I'm going to go with the select 2016 data center and with the same sizing, uh, two virtual CPUs and 8GB of RAM is more than I think sufficient for this demonstration. I'll go for its username and password. Confirm the password. And inbound port rules, I'm going to stick with the 3389. So click on networking. And here we would remain in the same sales vnet as we have here the sales vnet then but we'll go for a private subnet so instead of public one i'm going to go for a private subnet because this time i want to keep it a different subnet i don't want a public ip here so i'm going to select none here i'll stick with the basic options for network security groups as well as the public inbound port. so 3389 we need because we would be rdping it from within the virtual network so we still need that 3389 to be open so no accelerated networking and no load balancing click on management nothing we need here click on advanced nothing tags review press create and we would be very very quick here and click on create it's going to submitting the request for my the second machine and it's initializing the deployment and sub submitting it let's see what is the status of my the previous one which we created if we go to virtual machines uh, this one is getting ready and it says running so let's go and try logging into this one in the meantime the other machine who should be ready so i'm going to copy this public ip address from here i'm going to do the rdp so this is the virtual machine name and you can put a username here this was my username and click on connect I want a different username. Hopefully.
hopefully you remember the password which I'm very bad at and I don't remember very good hopefully this time it works yes let's click on here and it's logging me in so you can see we are logging we have logged into the very first virtual machine so this is the public IP and let's see what is the status of our virtual machine and the second one sorry if it is ready yes it is ready and it is let's click on edit columns I want to see the private IP address from the layer itself so I'm just gonna add it here if you look at it here we have got this 10.1.2.4 that is the IP address for this VM2 and this is the IP address 10.1.1.4 let's go back to our our machine so it's still getting ready it's ready okay i'm gonna just close it it's gonna take some time in the meantime let's open the command prompt and see the ip address if you look into the ip config it would be seeing Mr. 10.1.1.4. Let's try doing the IP. It was 10.1.2.4. That was the IP address. You can see I don't need a public IP now. You can go and talk on private IP address. So that would be the username, and that is the password. So here it is, it says yes, click on yes and voila, we are logged into the other machine internally with the help of private IP address. So that's it guys, that was the uh, demonstration. Let's go back to our presentation and let's quickly go through some of the points for the, uh, conf uh, uh, for the best practices here. I'm gonna minimize it. I'm gonna minimize that as well and let's go back to our PPT. Sorry, it's bringing me back. So that's what we logged in for this is the vnet for with the public ip we logged in here and then we did an internal rdp to the private ip address of this vm2 now let's talk about some of the uh, vnet best practices uh, basically when you define your cid block your vnet address space make sure it does not overlap with the organization's uh, other network ranges because if you have a plan for uh, doing an on-premise to win uh, azure vnet connectivity at that point of time it would create issues if you have all the uh, i mean if you are starting up uh, you are new and this is where you are very first subnet then there will be no uh, point of uh, conflict here but if you already have a current setup running up compromises make sure that is not overlapping with those your subnet which we just created two subnets in our vnet should not be covering the entire address space of your vnet you can reserve some addresses for the future use as well and to man prevent uh, management overhead it is recommended you should have a uh, fewer larger vnets rather than having multiple small small vnets and you can always secure your virtual networks by assigning network security groups at the subnet level and which we'll see uh, in a, one of other videos how we can do that so that's it guys that's it for the day 